कम है कैसा Alex, kita start. Yes. Kita. Okay, kita start ya. Dah pukul okay. sepuluh. Okay. Right. Okay, boleh start sekarang. Boleh. Okay. okay. Announcement ya, ya introduction ya. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So once again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our friends far and wide. I understand we have uh, friends from USA. From Australia, or oh, Midori from Japan, yeah, from Malaysia, and of course our sunny island Singapore. So thank you for spending the time with Tipas via the Zoom presentation, Dalam Dapo, cooking with the pineapple in two lovely dishes, udang lemak masak nanas and sambal nanas timun. Some housekeeping. Kindly mute your mics to avoid just background noise. However, this is a very interactive session where we welcome questions at any time. Just unmute yourself, ask your questions, and then mute again, for again because of the background noise. Yeah. So before we go into the presentation, let me introduce myself. I'm Gwen Ong from the Peranakan Association Singapore a volunteer association, the beacon of Peranakan culture. For those who have not joined us as members, kindly consider to do so. It's a one-time online membership. So click on the link to join, which uh, we will share with you. Yeah. So this is the QR code. So click on the link to join. And uh, just to keep you informed of our uh, coming up events that we have, our next event is on uh, is a very interesting um, topic uh, on the 23rd of October. There we go. Uh, we will have Professor Wang uh, to share with us our Peranakan identity. The research was carried out from the DNA testing that some of us in the community contributed to via um, our blood samples. Okay, so with that, we identify ourselves on the genes of our Peranakan identity. So mark that date on your calendar. The next event that we have coming up, another date to note, this is a very, very challenging uh, convention that we will be organizing. Uh, and um, this is virtual. Okay. This is once in a lifetime and will never happen again of two greats on the same stage, G.T. Lai and Ivan Heng, <clears throat> in a play adapted from Emily on Emerald Hill. Thereafter, the symposium will renowned presenters on the subject matter, keeping the culture alive. Yeah. So please mark me two dates and kindly support TPAS. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Baba Alex Wong. He is currently live streaming from Washington, D.C. So uh, in terms of time, he is now 10 p.m. Uh, where he is. So I am grateful that he is awake at this time and uh, sharing with us his recipes. He is truly a Baba with multiple talents, a pianist, a Spanish school teacher, uh -huh, a Baba can speak Spanish, huh? okay. writer and photographer. In his personal quest for the meaning and understanding of the Baba culture, early days to present, Baba Alex discovers what compelled his Chinese ancestors to risk their lives and travel thousands of miles on the high seas in search of a new home in Southeast Asia. In his uniquely written recipe book, 
He ties in elements of the culture's history with personal recollection of his family and culture life. We are also introduced to his family members and ancestors via stories as per the contents of his book and the recipes of his grandmother. So now over to you, Alex, uh, to take the stage for your cooking presentation. Thank you. Papa Kaver, Sumabai, Suamakan. These are typical greetings that you hear in the Baba Nyonya home, right? How are you doing? Hope oh, everything's well. Have you eaten? Food is definitely a very, very big part in the culture. So, Jepun Masuk Dapogwa. Okay, welcome to my uh, kitchen. So, I'll be uh, showing you two recipes from Nanas from pineapple. Okay, um, there are not many dishes in the uh, culture with pineapple. These two being uh, main dishes that you will feature pineapple, but there are other small dishes like ate or atat, which is like a quick pickle made with pineapples and cucumber. So hopefully you'll enjoy these special dishes here. So the first thing I was going to show you here is a pineapple, the nuts, and it's an ugly looking pineapple. And there's a reason why it's ugly. I've held it in my kitchen for a week and a half. Okay. The secret to a good pineapple is buying it early and hold it as long as you can and get, this, get the right flavor from it. And the way to find out if you have the right flavor from it is the main thing is to smell. You smell this part here, the bottom part here. After some time, it should smell very sweet and you get the smell all over your kitchen and you know that it's time to cook it. The other way is to tell the color. The color has turned a little bit yellow, okay? And the bottom part is a little bit soft, but not too soft itself, okay? Just a little bit soft. It's like pressing against uh, this part of your thumb, just underneath your thumb here. So if you press that part, you can feel it just gives it just a little bit, okay? So the first thing is I'm gonna show you how to handle the pineapple. And a lot of people either buy pineapples that have been cut already, or it's been prepared for you already, or sometimes you buy it canned. If you want to buy canned, buy the ones um, um, that come in the natural juices and not in syrup because it will be too sweet, okay? If you can, can you please write in the chat where you are, where you are right now, where are you viewing from, from what country, from what city, so we can know um, where around the world you are right now. So the first thing is I'm gonna show you how to prepare a pineapple. I'm gonna move my screen, my, uh, my phone closer so you can get a better view of how I handle a pineapple, okay? As I said, if you can buy it fresh, buy it weeks in advance or a couple of weeks in advance, and then you, you can uh, ripen it to the stage that is the best stage for the cooking. So the first thing is I like to do this in a plastic bag, but I won't show it in a plastic bag. The reason why I do it in a plastic bag so it can catch everything, all the juices, all the leaves, and all the different parts, and also the skin outside, and it won't be a big mess in your kitchen. So what I do is the first thing is I will chop the top part here, and I will chop the bottom part here. One of the reasons why I do that is so that it is quite stable. I can handle it and it is gonna be quite stable, okay? And so what you do is you turn it up this way. Can you all see this okay? This is okay, everyone? Can you see this okay? Is it clear? Gwen, is everything clear? Yeah, yeah okay. Yes, everything's very clear, okay. thank you. Okay, good. Okay, and so you get a very sharp knife, okay? You can either use a, a sharp knife or you can use a serrated knife. The serrated knife has got all this teeth on it. This is much easier to, to cut through it, okay? So I'm gonna use this sharp knife. And what you do is you cut down on the sides without going too deep. So it will be like this. And you'll see a, a, just a little bit of, of the eyes over here, okay? So that's how you're gonna cut your pineapple. And then you're gonna just cut round there, go round. 
don't go too deep because you want to make sure you get as much flesh as possible from your pineapple. It not be a waste to cut it all and a very little flesh left. Okay. So one thing I want to tell you is that pineapple has very important significance in the Baba Nyonya culture. Pineapple is used to for the samayang for the prayers. And it is one of the best or the biggest offerings that you can do on the altar table. It's even bigger than say uh, clementines or oranges or mandarins. Another thing is that um, during Chinese New Year, the pineapple has a lot of significance because in Hokkien, it's called Ong Lai. Ong Lai literally means good fortune arrives. So that's why you make the pineapple tarts, although pineapple tarts are actually probably an adaptation of a British tarts, okay, uh, fruit tarts. But uh, we make pineapple tarts so we can bring in good fortune into the new year, okay? So let me continue cutting this pineapple. So this is the best way to cut it with a little bit of the eye still showing. You don't wanna cut it too deep. We're gonna handle the eye a different way, okay? So you notice that it's all cut up already. You notice that was pretty easy. It was really, you know, didn't take much time there. Now for the eye, what you do is you find the pattern of the eye, the direction. And you can see there are diagonal lines there. And what you do is you cut into the lines. You make lines, but very close and very thin lines, okay? Like wedges. And this is how you handle this. Cut it there. There are some parts that probably don't look very nice. You have to cut it a little bit bigger. So you can cut it there. Probably some of you remember growing up, going to the streets and buying pineapples and you see the pineapple vendor and how they handle the pineapples. This is the same way. This is the same way they handle it, you know? I've seen people who have used um, like very sharp tongs to go into the eyes and pick one at a time. I think that's too much work. And also the pineapple doesn't end up to be very pretty. So I think this is the best way to do it, okay? Does anyone have any um, creative ways of handling the eyes? Can you share? Do you have any, any other ways of handling the eye of the pineapple, the, 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 the small eyes? Does anyone have one? You can share. Maybe we'll learn something. Okay. Yes, unmute yourself. So, yeah, unmute yourself yes, unmute. and uh, can I have a conversation. <laughs> Does anyone have one to share? As I see, it's it's not taking much time here to clean it, right? Not much time. You want to get rid of it because it's it's extremely fibrous, and when you if you eat into it, it's like eating pieces of a bark. So you want to avoid that completely. Okay. So let me see, I've just got a little bit more. A couple of them left on it, it's okay. It's not so bad, okay? You don't have to worry about it if it's just, just a few, but take as much off as you can. Okay, that's pretty much it. And then you can, you can trim the parts here, okay, that have a little bit of bark. And I have a little bit more here, so I can trim a little bit more. You can take your time and not rush and take as much as you can, okay? The secret to this, the, the two dishes being a success is really the pineapple. You have to start with the pineapple. You have to make sure you get it really ripe. You get it really fragrant. It's really smelling throughout the house. It's ready to be used. If anything, time the dishes to the pineapple. If you want to, you can get it way early, okay? And when it's ripe, you cut it, you store it and refrigerate it. And that can, can hold for a few days until you decide to cook it, okay? So what I like to do with the pineapple at this point is I will cut straight down into halves, okay? Then I'll cut it into quarters. Okay, then you set them down. 
And what I do here is I cut them into halves, each quarter into halves. And you want to remove the core, the core right here, which is very tough. Okay. And you just slice it there. And that's it. It's done. Very simple. It took me probably what, like 10 minutes altogether to prepare the pineapple. Okay. So it's better to go and buy the pineapple and let it ripen and prepare it yourself. That's the secret to a wonderful dish, to a, to a great dish, a successful dish. I'm gonna put this aside. And we're gonna to go to something in Nyonya cooking is called the rumpa. The rumpa is the spice paste, the spice paste that we use for um, the base of the flavoring. We have the Italians and the Spanish and the Latin, uh, Latin Americans that use something called the sofrito, which is the same thing. It's a spice base. It has to do with herbs, it has to do with roots, you know, you, and, and spices, and we put them together and we cook it in the oil to bring lots of flavor to the qua, which is the gravy, basically, which is going to infuse into um, the whole dish, okay? So let me show you what are some of the ingredients that we have for today. What I like to show you everyone is sometimes you can use alternatives, okay? Um, since I live in the United States, um, things can be a little bit difficult to find. And before I lived in the United States, I lived in the UK in the eighties and it was really, really difficult to find the bahan bahan, the ingredients, okay? So nowadays things are better. But I want to show you that um, there are some things that we can substitute uh, the difficult um, and, um, ingredients. So the first thing is we have the dry chili, the chili kering. Okay, um, the, the, the kinds from Malaysia and Singapore are very difficult to get outside of the area, maybe in Australia, but definitely in the US, they have all these different dry chilies that are not suitable. There's the Thai kind, which is too spicy. Uh, there's the Indian kind, which can be too spicy also. But I found that if you go to the market that has Mexican products, the one that's called chili puya, chili puya is ideal in terms of the heat uh, flavor, the heat amount. It's quite good, okay? And so what you do is you break off the top, okay? And let me just take you. Pick up the top and you want to take out the seeds. You want to take out the seeds from there and you put it in the bowl and you can soak it in water. Or if you want to speed it up, you can put hot water and that would speed things up, okay? Um, the chilies. So we need basically a five, uh, five dried um, chili bowl or the chili puya, okay? You're gonna make one, tablespoon of the chili bowl paste, okay? So if you have some prepared, you can use one tablespoon. So fresh chilies in a lot of Asian stores is called finger hot chili peppers, okay? And what you want to do also is you want to remove the seeds. So what you can do is you can tap it on the counter or the plate, tap it, squish it a little bit after you cut it, cut a little bit lower uh, like a half an inch lower from the stems, okay? And then you, you can break it a little bit and you can push it out, okay, all the seeds. The seeds really do not add much altogether. The heat is basically from the flesh and from the veins. The veins is the one that can, contains the heat. So you wanna break it. Um, try to avoid using like the small chilies like chili padi, okay? Chili padi is mainly good for um, basically on the side when you want to eat noodles or you want to eat um, rice with it. But in terms of using for rumpa, use the, the long um, finger hot chili peppers. And then you can cut it up. We're going to cut it up here and I'm going to add it to my, add it to my um, collection of chili peppers here. So it doesn't have to be in big pieces. It can be fairly small pieces for now. Okay. The next thing is we have the lemongrass. I'm just gonna move this here. We have the lemongrass. We have two 
stalks of lemongrass. Try and get the thick ones, rather thick, and the skin is not too dry, okay? Now, one thing you want to notice is that when you get your lemongrass, when you peel it back, you'll come to a section where you'll notice there is a white part here that goes to the root. This is the part you want to avoid. You want to cut above that part. So you cut the part off here, and then you start slicing it, okay? Doesn't have to be too, too narrow, okay? Or too small. You slice it until it feels quite fibrous. And when it feels quite fibrous, you want to stop there, okay? And then you put your lemongrass there. Now for the rest of the lemongrass, what you can do is you can smash it like this. And you can add it to the dish and we'll add more lemongrass um, aroma into your dish, okay? The next thing we have is galangal root. You want um, half an inch of galangal root or 1.5 centimeters, okay? I, what I tend to do is when I go to the market and I see some fresh ones, I tend to cut it into quarter inch or um, half a centimeter uh, width, okay, or thickness, and I freeze them. They freeze very, very well. And you can find this in Thai stores, um, mainly Southeast Asian, Vietnamese stores also, okay? Now, what I find that when you want to process it, the best thing is to just cut it up into smaller pieces. If you don't have galangal root, you can always get the powder, okay? And then a recipe that tells you how much of the powder you need to use. In this case, it will be a quarter teaspoon powder, okay? Okay, um, the next thing is we have turmeric or kunyit. Kunyit gives a very earthy scent to it as well as gives a lot of beautiful color to the dish. And again, to make sure that you want the pieces to chop up well in your blender, you just cut it up into smaller pieces that will facilitate the chopping process. Now for this also, you can use the powder. And in this case, we use half a teaspoon powder. Okay, turmeric is very strong. So you wanna make sure you don't use too much of it. In this case, the root is gonna be uh, a one inch um, root, okay? Um, the next thing is we have wakras, which is candle nut. Candle nut uh, comes from Southeast Asia. One thing you have to be careful, especially if you have kids around in the kitchen, is that this is toxic in the raw form, but it's fine after you've cooked it. So make sure that no one picks it up and thinks that it's a nut that they can eat and pops it in the mouth, okay? So be careful of that. Now, the best way to treat candle nut is to use the lasong, the mortar pestle, okay? The reason why is because if you chop it in the um, food processor, the pieces do not become soft and small enough. And so it will feel a little bit gritty when you eat them, the, the dish. So what you do is you take that, you crush it really well, make sure it's a nice smooth paste. This reminds me of, you know, growing up, you know, you can hear from the dapot from the kitchen throughout the whole day. My grandmother will be pounding in the lasong, you know, all the rumpa spices. There was no food processes back in those days that everything was pounded together. Either she will use this or she will use the bigger batu giling, which is like a, it looks like a cylindrical uh, stone and she will crush it onto another stone like this. Or there's the round batu giling where when there's lots of dry chili, like here, lots of dry chili, which is very hard to pound, she will push it into the hole and will be a crusher, basically two round stones that are just one rotating on top of each other and will be just crushing it and it produces the smoothest chili paste. So maybe some of you remember growing up with that. If you do, can you write in the chat? Remember, remember growing up with the lasong or the batu giling, with a modern pestle or with a crusher, what I call the spice crusher, okay? So this is nice and smooth now. 
Any questions so far? Gwen, are there any questions, any comments? No, but uh, okay. yeah, yeah um, you are evoking memories for some of us about growing up. Yeah, in, yes. in our grandmother's dapo. Yes. That, that for sure. When I went back to Malaysia, when I asked my, my Mako, my auntie, I said, Mako, show me all the recipes. I want to write a book. She will wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and she will be pounding the rumpa. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll just wake up like, oh my gosh, my mako is already pounding rumpa for the day, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just a big dinner event that we have. We have between seven to 10 dishes made from scratch every day. Wow. Not counting the pickles, the atta, the sambal, the, 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 the condiments and all that. It was a feast. So at 6.30, my father insisted that we ate at 6.30 and everything had to be ready. And, and we had 10 people around the table. We had the lazy Susan and it was filled. Even though there was no room there, we put things on the side. And so everyone had to pass things around. And we start the meal by saying, you know, um, mama makan, papa makan, um, um, daddy makan, mommy makan. You know, and we yeah. go through the ritual of calling everyone, you know, uh, before we start the meal. Maybe some of you did that when you were growing up. Okay. So the next thing is, um, some of the things that we have is the blachan. Yes, this is the most, one of the most important ingredients in Nyonya cooking, blachan. Mmm, smells very strong. Okay. So the blachan can come in two forms. One in the block form, which is very typical of Southeast Asia, okay? Or you can go to the stores and find the Thai type. That is a paste. And there are two reasons why I prefer this. First of all, it's sealable. It will stop the smell from stinking your house. That's the most important thing, okay? Lisa, you were a rumpa pounder specialist. Wow, that's very good. By the way, I want to tell you something about pounding the rumpa back in the old days. If you did not know how to pound the rumpa with the correct sound on the lesson, that was disqualification for marriage. The mother-in-law could walk into the house and she, she had to ask you to pound in the lesson. And if the rumpa pounding was not a certain sound, she could disqualify you. Wow, it was very, very strict back then, right? So very important to do that. So yes, use this one here. I prefer to use that. And it's easier to handle because it's also softer. It's also softer. And also, as I said, you can keep this without smelling the house, okay? Um, other things we have is we have the shallots, okay? Now shallots come in different, different sizes. And so what I have done is written a recipe with just weight. And so you can get the big shallots or you can get the smaller shallots. But if you have the smaller shallots, I put the number as 10 shallots or will be 100 grams. Now, one thing that's really hard to find is asam kaping or asam gelugo. okay? This is not quite tamarind. This is actually a sour fruit and it grows a lot in East Malaysia. It's a sour fruit. And what you do is you give it a quick wash. And what the washing does is that it kind of, you know, gives it a jump start to activate it in the meal. The other ingredient is we have ikan masin. This is the secret to my grandmother's dish. Not many versions of this dish I've seen uses salted fish. Okay, it could be any form. It could be even the soft form. It could be the dry form. Uh, usually my grandmother used the one called ikan sepat, okay, which is a freshwater fish that my dad said he used to catch in the sawapadi, you know, in the, um, in the rice fields in uh, Bukit Rambai, where he, he's from, okay? So you can use any form. And what you do is you can take a pair of scissors, kitchen scissors, and you can just snip away into fairly large pieces, okay? And what this um, does to the dish is that it adds saltiness, but importantly, it adds a lot of umami seafood flavor. And that just takes the dish to another level altogether. As I said, this is the secret to my grandmother's version, which I have not seen in many dishes, uh, versions and recipes. Now, some people add another thing. They add coffee lime leaves, 
okay, daun purut, a uh, purut, a uh, purut, sorry, and they add also uh, daun kunyit, which is uh, turmeric leaves. But it's really up to you. Uh, my grandmother never did that, so I'm just trying to stick to her version right here. So the first thing we're going to do before we do that is we're going to prep also our shrimp. Shrimp also being the main ingredient on this dish here. And it's important that you get fresh shrimp, okay? It's so one way to tell if it's fresh is you pick it up, smell it. It shouldn't smell strong of iodine or iodine. Uh, it should smell just clean sea flavor, okay? Now, the traditional way is to eat it with the shell on. Two reasons why the shell is kept on. First is the Baba Nyonyas love to taste gua. Gua means gravy, thick gravy, okay? You rarely find very um, soupy, loose soupy or clear soups in um, the Nyonya cook cooking. You'll find thick gravy. And in this case, it's gonna be a thick sauce, okay? So one thing they like to do is they like to taste it before they peel it. The second thing is that it keeps the shrimp uh, moist and it doesn't overcook it quickly when you keep uh, the shells on. So you want to keep that in mind when you do that. But I have a couple of tips to show you. My sister Adeline in Sydney, she's very particular. She doesn't like the vein, but if you keep the shell on, how can you remove the vein? So there's a little trick. You find the separation between the segments of the shell and you poke, you poke into the flesh underneath the top, okay? And then you just pull it up. Oh, see? It came up, right? Okay. And then you just pull it up. Then you put it in a bowl of water and there, it will just loosen and it will just fall into it. So that's a trick. Now, sometimes the vein may break. So what you do is that if it breaks there somewhere, you can go back you know, towards the end or one of the ends and you can pull it up again. Another way of presenting this that I like to do sometimes is, I know so you can devein it at the same time, is you take a serrated knife and you cut from the uh, head area, you cut into the flesh, you cut into the flesh, okay, cut it not too deep, cut into the flesh, right, okay, and then you can open it and then you can pull the vein out that way. So I hope you guys learned a um, couple of new ways of deveining the shrimp, especially the first way when you don't have to peel it at all. And you can leave the shell on, okay? Or you can peel it also and it will look pretty. One of the tricks I find that, you know, if you have guests coming and guests tend to take shrimp a lot, okay? And so to give the impression that they're taking more, is that I like to butterfly it and it looks like it's more than what they're taking. So that's another thing you can do. Okay, so it's now it's a butterfly and it's clean. Okay. Okay, so everything is now ready. So that's yap siap, bahan bahan. So let's go to just the coconut milk here. One of the last things. Okay. Buy a thick kind of coconut milk if you're buying it from cans. But I've put it in also in the recipe, the uh, version where you're gonna use fresh, um, you know, grated coconut, and you can do that too. But if you want to buy, you want to buy the thick can. One way to tell if it's thick is you shake it, okay? And as you shake it, you can hear the sound. And a thick coconut will, will have a very deep sound in the can. Well, a thin coconut will have a lighter sound, a higher pitch sound, okay? So that's one way to do it. Okay, so the first thing is, let's make the rumpa. As I said, the rumpa is very, very important. But before I go on, any comments, any questions? Lisa told me that she was the expert um, rumpa maker in the house. Any other comments? Gwen, Alex. any other comments? Yes, Alex, yes. Um could you kindly um, uh, expand on why the grass is uh, toxic in its raw form? I think there's a lot of curiosity in that subject matter. I don't know, but I've, that's what I've been told. 
and ah, I've never, okay. you know, the another thing is also the uh, Lua. that is toxic also oh, yes. in, in its raw form. And so what they have to do is they have to put it in volcanic ash for 40 days yes. and to remove the toxins. So mm -hmm. the volcanic ash is very fine and it removes the toxins and before, you know, you can soak it and then consume it. So there are certain things that, you know, I cannot explain, but you know what, you have to listen to your Marco, listen to your grandmothers, you know, and, and, and respect what they say, right? True, true. It's what we well, Yeah. Uh, lessons from the kitchen, we call it. That's right. Lessons from the kitchen. So I'm passing on the tips that, that I've learned, okay? <laughs> now, if you use the food processor, I find that one thing that's important is that a small food processor does the best work in terms of chopping your um, the rumpa stuff. The other thing is that you want to get a food processor that will go the blade, the blade goes both ways. It goes forward, chopping. And then if you go, it goes backwards, it grinds. And that's what it creates the, uh, the right consistency of the rumpa for the cooking. And that exudes all the essence, all the oils, all the um, juices from all the shallots, chilies and all that before you know, we can cook it. And that's how you get a very smooth rumpa, okay? So the first thing I like to do is first chop up, chop up the uh, most, the hardest one, which is the sarai, okay? So I'll go ahead and just chop it. Okay. Okay, so you want to chop it as much as you can because you're going to chop it again. So you don't have to worry about making it too, about making it too fine for now. So I'm going to put this aside. Next thing I'm going to add is, I'm going to add the dry chilies because they're a little bit tougher. Okay, and you just have to give them a start first before we make the full rumpa. So just give them a start. Good. So that's that. Then I'm gonna add the shallots next because the shallots are kind of tough. Okay. Okay, then I'm gonna add um, the other hard roots, which is the um, galangal, okay, and the, and the turmeric. And you wanna chop them quite fine. Okay, so the good thing about having a small chopper is that you can lift it up and bounce it a little bit to help everything drop back and settle to be chopped even better. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna add is the fresh chilies. So you notice there are lots of ingredients that go into the rumpa. That's the thing that adds the complexity to the whole meal. That is the foundation. So, you know, like we talk about the house, when there's a strong foundation, you can build a lot on top of the foundation. So this is the foundation to a wonderful dish. So we'll go ahead and chop it. So you notice I'm bouncing a little bit so that everything falls down again. So they're properly chopped, right? This thing is probably like 20 years old and it serves me really, really well. So I've kept it that long, okay? Uh, next thing is I'm gonna add the blachan and which is the shrimp paste, fermented shrimp paste. This, in this case, this is from the bottle, the Thai kind, okay? You can find that pretty much in, you know, any stores, Asian stores these days. And then you can add, this time you can add also the um, wakaras, which is the candle nut. Now a good substitute for the candle nuts, if you uh, have a hard time finding it or um, you prefer not to use it, since the candle nut is something that gives viscosity to the, to the sauce, 
and it adds something lama, which means it's something creamy. So it adds a little bit of creaminess to it, nut creaminess to it. A good substitute for this is macadamia nuts or raw cashew nuts, okay? Don't get the roasted ones. The roasted ones have a strong nut flavor to it. So what you can use is the raw cashew nut for this. And so I'm gonna give it a chop. Okay, I'm gonna add back the lemongrass, which is the toughest thing to cook. I mean, to chop, sorry. And I'm gonna add it back and I'm gonna really chop it very, very well until it's as smooth as possible. Okay. Remember I told you that it's best to get a food processor that the blade can go the other way. So right now it's done most of the job chopping one way, which with, with, the, with the sharp side. Now the blunt side of blade, it's going to crush it, which is very much the same effect as the mortar and pestle, you know, the lesson of crushing it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the reverse way. And sometimes you'll have to mix it around so that it will crush even better, okay? So the better you can crush it, the, the tastier the rumpa will be. So you can tell how smooth it is by looking at the specks of chili in here. If you have pretty big pieces, it means that it can be cut, it can be chopped a little bit more so you can get a smoother consistency. Another thing I forgot to mention is that um, red chilies can be very expensive depending on where you are and depending on the time of the year. So what I find is that a good substitute is getting chili paste. In Indonesian, it's called samba olek or you can get the Vietnamese uh, garlic um, chili paste. And that will be a good, good substitute uh, if you find that chili is either too expensive or too difficult to find. Okay, just for the sake of time, but I, I'm just gonna stop here. I could probably could chop it a little bit more, but if you look in there, you can see all the pieces are pretty much very well chopped, okay? And crushed at the same time. You can Good tell by the, by the chilies in there. I'm sorry? Good job. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I think for some people, it means that I'm good marriage quality, right? <laughs> so Absolutely. anyway, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make the um, uh, cook the rum pam. So the next step after making the rum pam is the cooking. I'm going to add here. Let me look at my notes real quick. I'm going to add um, four tablespoons of vegetable oil. So right now I'm going to change my screen to the pot. Okay. Alex, could I just stop you here? There is a question. Yes. Uh, out of yes. curiosity, somebody is asking, what brand is your blender or the chopper? Oh, yes, it's called Cuisine Art. I beg your pardon? Cuisine Art. Uh, easy art. Cuisine oh. Art. Okay. Cuisine Art. Yes. I guess mm -hmm. it's purchased in US. <laughs> yeah, it's purchased in the US, but just find any small blender that allows you to reverse the blade. That's the most important thing. If you can reverse the plate, as you can see, the, the result is something that is very, very smooth, right? Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the oil. 
I'm going to use a um, iron cast skillet. And these are wonderful because they are even in the heat and also it's enamel, which means it doesn't stick that much. But you can use anything as long as it doesn't stick that much, okay? So one, two, three, four. Okay, just let it heat up a little bit more. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in for time's sake and I'll just cook away. What you want to do is you want to tumis the rampa. Tumis is the process of cooking it down where all the flavors of the roots, of the bulbs, of the leaves, all of that will be infused into the oil. And also what it does is it caramelizes the rumpa. And so it brings out a lot of flavor at the same time. So I'm just gonna turn it up high so that it's gonna be faster. And I remember growing up when my grandmother made this, she will wear the sarong kumban style, you know, where it's just a sarong over her bosom because it's so hot and you know she'll be sweating in the kitchen and so she doesn't want to wear a lot of clothes it cools her down and she'll be using this earthen pot called the belanga and she will cook this dish and the belanga always infused a wonderful slightly earthy note to this dish that you know you cannot find in any other um pots right does anyone remember um eating dishes made in the belanga by any chance, the earthen pot? Yes. If you do, please write it in the chat. Yes, okay, good. Anyone else? Okay, so you take your time cooking this for eight minutes. As I said, this is the foundation of a wonderful meal. Okay, wonderful version of this dish. So you have to cook it down. Meanwhile, I can entertain any other questions, any other comments. Um, can you write down? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, um, there is a comment that uh, from Cedric uh, that he adds oil into the blending process to smoothen yes. it. Yeah, so that's yeah. true. Cedric, good point. <laughs> if you want to smoothen it, do not add water. And I'm telling you why, do not add water. Water will make the tumis process much longer and actually will affect the tumis process of all the spices and all that. And you don't want to do that. Oil is a thing that you want to add, okay? Oil is fine to add and you can cut back a little bit of oil, you know, when you tumis this thing here, when you tumis the rumpa, okay? So oil is the best thing to smoothen your uh, chopping process. So you take your time cooking this for, you don't want the fire to be too high because you don't want to scorch the rumpa. Once it's scorched, the flavor changes. And also um, the flavor is not as nice as, you know, the original version. So you want to avoid scorching the rumpa. And another thing, when you scorch it also, things tend to stick as you cook it. So what I love about this um, iron cast pot is that it doesn't stick because it's enameled and it's a very even, even heat, which is wonderful. So if you can use that, that'll be great, okay? So there was a lot of ingredients that went to the rumpa. That is a sign that this is gonna be full of flavor, full of flavor. Can some of you write down in the um, chat, what are some of the ingredients that are really hard for you to find in where you live? Some of you live outside of Malaysia, live outside of Singapore. Can you write down some? For me, it's the asam kaping, the, um, the, um, the sour slices. That is very difficult. And what I do is that instead of using that, I just use the, the tamarind pulp mixed with a bit of water. So in this case, I will use like a teaspoon of tamarind pulp and mix it with water. 
and add it on later to give that sour flavor. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter using tamarind pulp because you know uh, it doesn't have to be a clear sauce. Now, when you make things that are clear, that needs the, the sour slices, you cannot use the tamarind pulp. Say like itekpim, um, uh, which is the, um, you know, the, um, um, the, um, the soup that's made with um, pickled mustard greens, sour mustard greens, and duck. So, you know, you cannot use that because you want a clear soup. Well, in this case, this is not going to be a clear soup. So the sour slices can be replaced with um, tamarind pulp, okay? Mixed with water. Can you please write down in the chat what kind of ingredients it's difficult for you to find where you are to reproduce um, some Nyonya dishes or any dish? Uh, okay, uh, I have a question here. Uh, instead yeah. of using prawns, uh, can, yeah. fish, can fish be a substitute? Which I yes, think can definitely. Be. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah. And even if you want a vegetarian version, just get some fried tofu also. That will be another uh, good substitute if you want a vegetarian version, right? So, you know, Chris, uh, so you fry the tofu, what's called tofu pot, you know, and you add it in uh, the last few minutes after you make the gravy. Well, I, I have an interesting uh, comment here. Uh, one yeah. of, uh, she says that she, her mom used to do sardine with uh, nanas. Ah, <laughs> yeah, sardine. <you> see? <laughs> yeah, so that's nice. So as long as as long as the base, okay, and the flavors are there, you know, pretty much you can, you know, you can um, um, extemporize. You can make different versions. You know, you can make these different versions of it, as long as the flavor is there. Okay. And then regarding ingredients or that is difficult to find, I have comments here. Uh -huh. uh, daun kado yeah. and daun choko uh, for making the nasi ulam. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. This so, question. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. So the, the daun kado is definitely very, very hard to find. Try and find that oh, in Thai sorry. stores. Okay, can, you, can, can you hear me? Yes. So you go to the Thai stores and they use down kadok to eat it raw with like um, dry fish, uh, uh, dry shrimp and peanuts, but like an appetizer. So you can find it there. Okay. The down kadok. Um, another thing is a substitute is I found something called sesame leaves in Korean stores. And it has a slight aniseed minty flavor that I use it for otak otak. So that's another substitute if you you're in a place where there are a lot of Korean stores, they use what we call perilla leaves or sesame leaves. Perilla or sesame leaves. And that is a good substitute for the down kadok. If you want to say, if you want to use it for the otak otak. Okay. Any other questions, Gwen? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, this is regards to the dried blachan. Notice yes. that the Thai blachan is wet. Okay, will yes. dry blachan affect the taste? Because you are using no. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so because you are using, using wet, so that I have a question regarding dry. It's not very wet. It's just slightly moist. It's close to dry actually. Okay, so it will not affect it at all. It will not affect it. It's very very close in flavor, uh, but I would say you know Malaysian blachan is probably more fragrant. You know, but um, but. The Thai one is equally, nearly as equally as good. So I, I would use that if you can't find the Malaysian version. Okay. okay. Right. Any uh, other questions yeah, or comments? The, the rest is the same. It's uh, asam keping, wakaras, ikan masin. Uh, yeah. To locate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, so, so as I said, the wakaras, the substitute will be macadamia nuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or um raw cashew nuts make sure it's raw raw cashew nuts okay and not um the cooked one because the cooked one the oil has already changed in flavor and so it gives it that that nutty extra nutty flavor that you don't want basically the buakaras or the candle nut just adds the um the thickness viscosity to the thickness to this to this to the sauce okay and that's what you want and um, the cashew nut will do the same thing too 
Okay. Now the good thing about this of this part is that you know you can scrape some of it that it's already sticking but i've already cooked it for seven minutes so i'm gonna go for another minute to give this rumpa a good caramelized caramelization basically okay mm -hmm. and the house should smell wonderful by now you can smell all the different spices and roots you know Okay, so at this point, okay, um, you if you are doing the separate uh, coconut milk from fresh coconut, we have the first press and the second press. What you can do that my grandmothers used to do is if you got the can, the total is going to be one cup, okay, or one cup is two uh, forty um, milliliters. And what you can do is you can pour three quarters of it. You can do it this way, the old way, or you can do it the other way where you are just basically pouring the whole thing with some water. But the first, the original way was to put in the uh, santan pakat, you know, the first press of the santan and cook it down. And what this does, this does, which is very similar to what the Thais do with the curry, is that the oil from the santan is going to just come out a little bit and it's gonna add a little bit more flavor to the dish. So this is a secret that our grandmothers used to do. They always cooked their santan, the first press and the second press separately, differently. So it adds a little bit more flavor. So you bring it to a simmer, okay. And then I'm going to add a couple more of things. I forgot to cut up all my pineapples. So I'm going to quickly slice up more pineapple. Now, when you slice your pineapple, you want to slice them to around one centimeter or half an inch thick. Do not go thinner than that. What happens is that if you go thinner, it will, it will start to disintegrate as you cook it. You want them to be whole. You don't want them to be uh, broken up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your, your sour slices, mm -hmm. or again, you can put the tamarind paste mixed with water mm -hmm. and put your pineapple, okay? And you start cooking that. What I like to add to at the same time is actually the dried fish. The dried fish will start releasing its wonderful flavors into the dish. And you wanna give it like a head start. So you start early. Alex, I have a question. Yes, yeah. Um, so, you know, in Malaysia, of course, you know, you have first press, second press and everything. But here right. I can only get coconut milk. So I was wondering, can I use uh, coconut cream as the first press because it's thick? and the regular coconut milk as the second press. Yes, so you can use coconut cream, but sometimes the cream is a little bit too thick, so you have to gauge it, okay? If it's a little uh -huh. bit too thick, just add a little bit of water. And then the, uh -huh. then the regular coconut milk, if you want, or the second press, find the one that is very diluted, it's not so thick, you know? And as I said, the one way to find out is to shake it, you know, and you can hear the sound and that uh -huh. will let you know, okay? But one thing also is be careful that you don't want it to be too too rich in coconut milk. You know, it will be too, what do you call gelat, you know? It will be too heavy, uh -huh. you, you see? Yeah, so okay. you have to play with the, 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 with the brands of uh, coconut milk that you use. So another way to do it is to cook it like that, or when I had one cup, you put one whole cup in, uh -huh. you put a whole cup in, and then you add, half a cup water of um, just plain water to the thick coconut milk. And that should be around the same consistency as um, the first and second press mixed together. Okay, so like okay, this. Great. Yes. Okay, thank you. So you, you have to play around with, you're welcome. You have to play around with the, with the recipes that you have, I mean, with the type of um, coconut milk that you have and see which is the best one to use, which is thick enough, which is not thick enough and things like that. So what you want to do is, now you added the water, okay? And you want to simmer for around 15 minutes. Since I've added everything already, 
you want to bring it down so that it's not too high. Okay, and you want to simmer for around 15 minutes. So I'm gonna cover here and simmer for 15 minutes. Now we have time to make our second dish since we have so, so much pineapple here, right? So we can make a second dish here. And the second dish is the sambal nasty moon. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the other dish and I'm going to make that real quick. Alex, oh, by the way, question. sorry, Alex has a question here. Yeah. I'll just stop you. Mm -hmm. With regards to your yeah. rumpa that you have just done, mm. if you do yeah. not add in the pineapple, all right, mm -hmm. uh, can that be done in bulk and freeze it up? Yes, you can do that. You can make the rumpa ahead, okay, and then bring it out of the freezer, and then you put everything together last minute. So you can just mm -hmm. fry the rumpa and then freeze it and then bring it out when you need to. Is, does that answer the question? Right, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So the pineapple, you don't want to freeze it, definitely, because what happens is that it breaks down its integrity, cellular integrity, and it starts to get very watery. So that's one thing you don't want to do, okay? So I'm just going to check and make sure it's a simmer. It's not too, not too heavy of a fire. Not too strong of a fire, okay? I just check that and it's fine. Okay, for this dish here, for the uh, sambal and nasty moon, okay? Let me get my ingredients together. So we have three tablespoons of dry shrimp and you want to soak it for a little bit and then uh, rinse it off. Now this is lachan and you have to toast it. And the reason why you have to toast it is two reasons. One is to increase the flavor, okay? And the other one is to kill any bacteria, okay? So what I did was I smeared it into aluminum foil. And some of you probably live in areas where the kitchens are all enclosed. And so you know, the smell can be in your house for a few days. <laughs> we're, not, we're not fortunate enough to have the outside kitchen. So what you do is you fold it as many times as you want. Okay, and then what you do is you put it on a small fire. Let's see, you put it on, let's see. Yeah, you put it on a small fire, okay? As small as possible and toast it like that and let it smoke for around a minute on one side. And then you flip it over and then you toast it and let it smoke for a minute, okay? So that's one way to handle the blachan and make sure you open your windows for sure and then your neighbors will complain. I'm not, hopefully not, okay? Um, the other thing we want is cucumber. We have uh, the pineapples here, okay, that I cut up earlier. And then we have um, what we call um, peanut brittle, the Chinese kind, okay? Now, if you cannot find the Chinese kind, if you go to places that sell Mexican goods, they also have this also. So you can find it there. And this is, uh, in the recipe, I'll give you a alternative. If you cannot find this, you can mix peanuts, sugar, and sesame seeds, okay, to, to produce the same flavor also. So the first thing is we have to peel our cucumber. Any questions so far? Any comments? Yes, gentle comments. Uh, there's one that says, uh, brilliant idea on your toasting of the blachan over the small, over the stove. Uh, much appreciated great. from Moses in Sydney. And, oh, great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, somebody commented that uh, coconut milk in Tetra Pak tastes better than tin. So, yeah. That's a personal comment on that. Okay, uh, great, great hint there. Great tip. Uh huh. And again, oh, you have piped some interest regarding your OTA recipe. So it looks like we're going to have another session with you, maybe regarding OTA. Oh, definitely. Right. Yes, great. no problem. I love making OTA OTA. And oh. you know what? OTA OTA is actually easier than you think. A lot of people are afraid of making all these wonderful 
recipes that we grew up on. You know, our grandmothers used to slave in the kitchen, you know, making these dishes. Believe me, it's much easier than you think. And the flavors are the same. So I wouldn't mind making another session with the otak otak. Okay. Right. To all our guests today, a raise of hands. If everybody's okay with an OTA session, I'll get him, I'll get Alex to, to join us again at another date. Any hands yet? Yes. Please oh, raise your okay. hand. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <My Thank you>. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, OTA OTA has been you know, many, many ways of making OTA OTA, you know. And uh, some people, um, they know only like a one way or two ways, but there are many ways of making otak otak. There's a steaming way, steam in a plate, you know, there's the folding and steam, uh, folding in banana leaves and steaming it. Oh, by the way, those of you that do not know otak otak is basically fish cooked in a mousse. It's like a spicy coconut mousse. It's just a wonderful, soft, and very flavorful uh, dish to cook fish, okay? Also, they can wrap it sometimes in banana leaves and it's steamed. Or another way that my other grandmother used to do is she used to make um, a mix of krisik into it, which is toasted coconut. And she would roll it into um, like cigar shapes and then she would grill it. And that's another way of making it. So a lot of people are not aware of the different ways of making otak otak, okay? Okay, let me show you one quick way of, um, of dealing with a cucumber. So you split it in half. One thing you want to do is you want to de-seed it because the, the seeds have a lot of liquid in it, okay? And you don't want a salad where you mix it together and next thing you know, you have a pool of cucumber juice. That's something you wanna avoid. So as you notice here, we have the flesh and we have the seeds. What I tend to do is I run by the border of the seeds and the flesh on both sides. So you run it there on both sides, okay? And then you take you take a tablespoon and you, you just, just go up and down and you just get all the seeds out. But I find that if you don't run the line on the sides, that tends to break the flesh. And so, you know, things will not very look very pretty. Or my grandmother used to say, that's rono, that's rono. It doesn't look proper, right? So it has to look proper. Everything about nyonya cooking is about appearance and about the right shape, the right texture. And nyonya cooks were very, very fussy. If you didn't do something right, they will come over and say, tatsurono, tatsurono. And if you didn't fix it in time, they will just take over and say, you know, uh, it's better for me, I do this myself. So grand, my grandmothers were like that, okay? Alex, so I would one like thing to share to, yes. with you about something yeah. about, I learned about cucumber. Uh, you know, I've always yeah. had cucumber like, uh, the way you showed, remove all the seeds, you know, for achar mm -hmm. or for satay. Mm -hmm. you know, I love yeah. cucumbers. But when I moved to the States, I noticed that whenever I eat cucumbers here, I automatically get indigestion. Heartburn. Oh. Couldn't mm. figure it out for the longest time because I love cucumbers, mm -hmm. you know, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. And then I found out it was the seeds. Oh, people I in the see. United States don't remove the seeds they just chop and oh. you just eat it so right. <laughs> once I figured that out I could have cucumbers again oh that's good that's good one thing I try to do is I tend to go to the Korean stores and buy the uh -huh. unwhacked cucumber because the Koreans uh -huh. use the, the cucumbers for um, the cucumber kimchi and so they don't want the wax in it you see and so the Korean stores have the unwaxed ones. And so I find that those are much healthier and they're not sticky and slimy. You know, don't have the wax outside, you know? Okay, oh, thank you for sharing. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting yeah. too, because the wax is, yeah, to keep the cucumbers more, you know, past the that's shelf right. life, but it's not good that's for right. us. Yeah, okay, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. The Korean ones that I actually I buy them for my salads every day, they don't last more than three, four days because of the fact that they don't have wax, you see? And so the, that's a better kind of cucumber to get. So back to my cucumber, you can see I've removed all the seeds. You see how smooth, you know, how smooth the, the edge is. It's not all broken up and jagged and all that. You know, my grandmother would be very proud and say, nah, srono, yeah, srono, yeah, you know, she'll be very happy. Okay, so you want to cut it into um, one centimeter, half inch cubes. 
So go ahead and cut into that. And you want two cups worth. Again, the size of the, um, of each bite is actually very important. Okay. So we're going to cut it into one centimeter cubes. You want it one um, two cups worth. Two cups worth is around 480 milliliters. In the recipe, um, um, copy everyone in the chat afterwards. You'll see that it is both in cups and also in in um, in milliliters too. So you get both versions. Okay. So don't don't be afraid. Again, let me cut it again. Let me cut it. It's very important to have a very sharp knife. That's the most secure way of cooking and cutting. It's a blunt knife that's going to create more problems. You're going to slip and you're going to probably cut yourself that way. So you want to make you have with a sharp knife, you, it takes the least amount of effort to do the slicing and dicing. Okay, let me see if I have two cups worth. Maybe I can get a couple more cucumbers, probably. Yeah, it's around two cups worth. Yeah, so I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put it in my bowl. Okay, as you can see, I put it in my bowl. Uh, I got a couple of pieces that are a little bit bigger than I thought, so I'm just going to make them smaller. The mouthfeel in the dishes are very important. The mouthfeel is a very important thing in Nyonya cooking. So you cannot just chin chai chin chai potong potong potong. You know, yeah, I think it has to be pretty precise. Okay, for the pineapple, if you have the eight, and what you have to do is you have to cut down the middle of the eight, okay, and then slice it again to around one centimeter or half an inch, and you want two cups worth. Has anyone had this um, sambal nastimun before by any chance? Can you write down in the chat if you you grew up eating this dish or some uh, version of this? Some some versions that I see is just basically cucumbers and pineapples and mixed with sambal blachan and probably a bit of lime juice, okay? But um, my grandmother's version was a little bit different than that. Has anyone had this version before, or their version of sambal nastimun? Uh, I grew up eating inlets, inwards uh, with it also. You know, you have the chicken ah. and, the, and, the, and the and the kidney and yeah and things like that. And gizzard, gizzard. So with it. Yes. So that is sambal timun, mm. which some people confuse actually. You mm. see? So that's called sambal timun. This one is sambal nenas timun, which is a little bit different because of the nenas. But you had it with nenas also, Gwen? Yes, I did. Gwen? <laughs> yes. I suppose oh, okay. uh, it was oh. something that you know, they just whatever was available. We also had it was what with star fruit as well. Oh, however, uh, was available, I guess. The, the blimbing or star fruit? No, no, star fruit. Blimbing was a, a different dish, but with star fruit, I remember. Yeah, okay, yeah. with star fruit. Ah, interesting. So every family has their own versions, you know, of certain recipes, you see. And I think it's really important that we try to um, document them and write them down and share. And I think it's very important that we do that because, you know, before you know it, you know, the recipes disappeared with someone, right? And it never was never shared, okay? So I have here my two cups of pineapple and two cups of um, timon, cucumber, and I'm just gonna put them there, okay? I still have a few more minutes to cook on the, on the, um, this year, so I'm just going to quickly have a look and see how we're doing. Oh, look at that. Nice and pukat. Oh, it was sticking a little bit, but you see the good thing about the, the, um, the, um, the, this pot is that it doesn't scorch easily, okay? And I've turned this down to the lowest flame actually. And you notice that I put also the extra lemongrass tops just to add more flavor, right? Why? throw it away. Why sayang, right? So just once possible, use it in the dish to add more flavor. So let me just taste it and see how it tastes. Wow, sedap. Memang sedap, sharp. Okay, so what you can do is you can add the salt and the sugar. Let me see what salt and sugar. We're going to add one teaspoon salt and one tablespoon sugar. 
So you want to cook this for around like 20 minutes, okay? For 20 minutes, I'm going to add some salt. So one teaspoon of salt. You want to make sure that's well seasoned because this is the qua that's going to go over your rice and everyone wants the nice flavors over the rice, okay? You don't want it to be bland. You're not, you know, people are not going to be happy, tapuas hati, you know? And you want to make sure that they're happy with the flavors. Let me see what's a tablespoon. Let me find my tablespoon right here. Okay, let me find a tablespoon. Now this takes quite a bit of sugar, more than you think, okay? Actually, this, there was some sugar there, I need more sugar. So I'm gonna take, a, I'm gonna put, put one teaspoon, I'm gonna put another teaspoon here, okay? And you want to add um, a teaspoon of salt. So I added a tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. You can always adjust it later. Now, if your sauce tends to get too thick, what you can do is you can add a little bit more water, okay? But some of the water is going to come up from the pineapple. And so don't add too much. And not, it was just going to get chai. It's going to be just a little bit too watery. And you want to avoid it from the, getting too watery. As I said, nonya cooking is all about the kwa, which is a rich sauce. And it's thick, thick sauce. OK. I wish you could smell this. It's, it smells really, really wonderful. Really, really wonderful. The pineapple has exuded the juices into the, the sauce. And so there's a fruitiness to it and there's a sweetness at the same time. So I'm gonna taste it. Wow, so that, mm. really good. But that's, it's a bit spicy also, which means you eat it in small quantities. You don't eat it in large quantities, okay? So I'm going to close this and let it cook a little bit more and just finish up my sambal nanasti moon here. So the other part is the dry shrimp. Let me just do it. Um, and the blachan. Okay. And add, chili sorry, also. Alex, I have a question here yes. from a yeah. guest. Um, is it okay to substitute local timun with Japanese cucumber? You know, I haven't had Japanese cucumber, but I think it will be fine. I think it will be fine as long as you remove the seeds. Um, the person who wrote that, do they have seeds at all, Japanese cucumber? Can you let me know? Well, they they well, Japanese cucumber has less seeds in them and it's not so wet oh. and mushy like a local cucumber. Then even better, I would say, go ahead and use it, okay? Sounds like a perfect kind of cucumber. And there's something that probably I have to look out for, right? Okay, thank you for that uh, comment. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quickly, this is a simple dish. Since you know we you use basically like half of the pineapple, you have another half left. So why not make a simple dish? A same uh, um, refreshing dish, a salad basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to process the dry shrimp. And I find that the best way to process the dry shrimp is in the processor and not with the uh, lesson. That takes a long time. I find it easier to use this. So go ahead, put it in there. Give it a chop until it's really fine. There, let me show you. It comes up really, really fine, okay? It's very quick. It beats pounding it for a good 10 minutes to try and get it this fine. So I find that this is the best way to do it. As I said, my chopper is, what, probably 20 years old and I'm very, very happy with it. Hopefully it will last me, uh, I don't know how many more years, right? Electronics, you never know these days. So I'm gonna take this out. Now the next one uh, we have to do is the um, the peanut brittle. That one, do not use a chopper, okay? Because what could happen is that your pieces could be very big 
And another thing is that it could um, scratch your plastic so much that it won't it will not be clear anymore. So you won't see it as well through the plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get at one of my favorite lessons, which is actually the Thai kind, the Thai kind of um, mortar and pestle. Give it a quick wash first. And this you can find, it's very cheap in the um, Thai stores. It's basically earthenware. And inside there are grooves. And it's the grooves that helps to crush things better, okay? So put a cloth on your marble. You don't want to hurt, uh, damage your marble. What you want to do is open your bag, open the bag and just do a few pieces at a time. You don't have to do that many, okay? And this is a hundred grams. And what you do is you crush it like this, uh, but don't crush it too fine. Don't crush it too fine. Hopefully I can show you closer. Yes, peel the cucumber skins, please. Yeah, you want to peel it so that um, it's smooth texture and it, you know, it would not interfere with the flavors of um, the, um, it's a bit bitter, the skin is a bit bitter. So you want to avoid the skins altogether. So you want to crush the peanuts. Now crush it quite fine, but you don't want to make it powdery, completely powdery. You want to see small pieces of peanuts, very, very small pieces, tiny bits. And that helps with the texture also. It provides more texture to the dish. It's not a very soft dish, but you get a lot, a bit of texture in the meal at the same time. So a lot of textures will be going on at the same time, okay? Gwen, are there any more questions? Nope, not for, not for a while now. Okay, so go. I'll go ahead and finish pounding all of this. Peanut candy, we grow up. Uh, we grow up with the name called Ong Teng. Ah, that's Hokkien. Yeah. yeah so my Hokkien. Cantonese grandmother called it Fasang Fa Tong. Ah, that's what she that's called right. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So as I said, you know, uh, in the recipe, I'll give you an alternative if you can't find this of combining sugar, peanuts, and sesame seeds. Okay, and the proportions will be there, and it's pretty much similar in terms of flavor. Sorry, I'm left-handed. And so <laughs> a lot of things are on the opposite side for me. Okay, just a little bit more of you. Okay, everything's gonna be finished pretty soon. So as you can see, there is, you know, a few bits still. Okay, a few bits still, and that's gonna add a little bit of texture to your, to your dish, okay? So, we have just a couple more steps left and then we're done with this dish. So the dish calls for chilies and the way to process the chilies is actually through the lesson. But what I found to, to you know, to cut a step, uh, cut out another step is to use the chili paste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a bowl and I'm going to be mixing all the ingredients together. So right here, instead of four to five uh, red chili peppers, I'm gonna use two tablespoons of this. Two tablespoons of this chili paste, okay? You see it's so much easier than pounding it, right? So go ahead and use two of this. And what you want to do right here, right now, is to add your blachan that's been toasted because it's gonna be quite dry. And so what you have to do is you have to rehydrate the blood channel. As you can see, this is how it is, okay? So what you do is you mix it in and you're going to crush it with the back of your spoon so that it won't be so dry, okay? Alex, question. Yes. Must the chili mm -hmm. paste be pre-cooked? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be pre-cooked. This one, this is a condiment that you use like chili sauce. So 
um, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine straight out of the bottle. You don't have to cook it at all. Okay. So that's a, another benefit of using that too. It's, 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 it's perfectly fine to use it out of the bottle, just like tomato ketchup or something like that. Thank you. Okay. So you notice I'm, I've crushed it very, very well so that the blachan is really homogenized with the chili paste, right? Make sure you do that. You're not, you get pieces of blachan in, in your mouth and it's too strong of a flavor. The blachan is wonderful because it's like anchovies in Italian cooking. It adds that umami saltiness to the dish that takes it to another step, right? Another, another level. So I've mixed this already. Um, if there is an allergy to peanuts, any substitution? Hmm. Then what I'll do is I'll just use sesame seeds and sugar. You know, okay. just use sesame seeds instead. But make sure you toast the sesame seeds first. And then you have nice flavor from the sesame seeds in the dish. Okay. So hopefully the person who asked that, hopefully uh, that will work for you. But toast the sesame seeds first and that should work. Um, what else? I can't think of anything else. Cashew nuts. Mm -hmm. Do you want to roast cashew nuts and crush them? That's also fine. Hopefully you don't have an allergy to cashew nuts also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So another thing you want to add is three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So let me find a teaspoon. So with three quarters teaspoon of salt, you probably want to start with half, depending on you know your salt intake, right? And you do that. So what you have to do for the meal is mixes the last minute do not make it in advance okay you can prep all this together you have your pineapple cucumber dry shrimp your chili paste with a blachan and your your crushed peanuts okay uh, um candy peanuts you know your brittle okay and you put this you put this in the fridge and this can sit out and when the meal is ready, when everyone is, has taken the seat, this is when you mix everything together. You gaul, 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 okay? And then it has to be eaten that day itself or within the hour because the water will start coming up from the pineapple and from the cucumber. And so it won't taste that good. But what you can do, if you know that, you know, only half of the portion is gonna be eaten. So you take half out, put the other half in the fridge and you just use half of the ingredients here and just mix up that amount to be served at the table. And then you can serve the other half another time with the rest of the ingredients, okay? So uh, just to show you, I'm just going to mix it right now so we can see the final product. Let me make this lower. Okay. You add the sambal with a blachan. Okay, you gaul, 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 mix it, mix it well, make sure all the lovely flavors are ev going everywhere to each little piece. So one thing I remember about this dish is that, you know, as my grandmother was going older, growing older, you know, I was helping her in the kitchen, making seven to 10 dishes each night. Okay, she would call me to the kitchen and she says, Hey, can you try this? And I would try it. And then I'll say, oh, it needs more salt. And she was asking me to do that quite a bit towards the, you know, as she got older. And so what I was realizing was that my grandmother's taste buds, she was starting to doubt her taste buds. And so just to make sure to confirm that she tasted things correctly, she would ask me to taste these things. And so that's part of my formation as a cook is from learning from my grandmothers and making sure that the flavors were correct, okay? So what I did was I put the dry shrimp at the end, okay? And then the very, very last thing is to add your crushed um, peanut brittle, okay? 
And here it is, a wonderful dish that is just so refreshing, a bit spicy, foods full of umami flavors and simple to make, very simple to make, okay? So we're done with that dish. You see how we can do that while we're waiting for the other dish to finish. So to finish this dish, let me turn on the flame. I've turned off the flame at one point because it cooked for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna bring it up to cook, to boil. As you can see, the sauce is quite pukat and lama, which means it's thick and rich. Thick from all the spices, thick from the coconut milk, and, and rich also from the coconut milk, okay? So you want to do is you want to give it a quick taste, make sure it's all fine. Mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna add a little bit more salt actually, a little bit more salt, just a little bit more. That's it, okay? Now, now it's all put cut. You can see also the uh, asam cupping has expanded and it's got soft, which means it's exuded all the flavors into the dish. As I said, the substitute is you can use tamarind paste mixed with water, a teaspoon of tamarind paste mixed with um, just a little bit of water. Okay, and just add it in. At this point, you add your shrimp. And you want to rata rata everything, make sure it's all evenly distributed. Okay. And you don't want to cook your shrimp too long. And you want to just cover it so that it doesn't get too dry. And just wait for a couple of minutes and it should be ready. Any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please feel free to do so. How does it look, everyone? How do the dishes look to you? Are they, did they look like something that you could try? Yes. Anyone else? Yes, that certainly. Is, it's oh, good, lunch, good. It's almost lunchtime in Singapore and Malaysia, yeah. I guess. So uh, yes, uh, getting everybody hungry. Oh, <laughs> good, good. So I noticed it, that's got a little bit thick. So what I'm going to do is just, just going to add very little water. Don't add too much water. You, as I said, you don't want the kuah to be too chai. You want it to be put up, you know? That's the secret to a good nyonya dish. The, the sauce is nice and put up. It's not too chai, not too watery. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So one thing I want to uh, tell you everyone is that I have a website, okay? Um, it's it's www.babanyonyaparanakans. Dot org. Gwen, do you think you could type that in the chat for me? Yes, and there I'm going you get to. The... Wait, sorry. Okay, um, thank, thank go you. ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, repeat again. Sorry. Yes, it's um, www.babanyonya. Yeah, nyonya with two y's. Huh? Um, and Paranakans with an S dot org. Okay. And that's where I have more recipes and also more stories from about my family. Okay. And also you can order my book from there with a 10% discount. All you have to do is that when you fill out the form, you can put in the comment section, you can say Zoom, you can put TPAS, which is the Pranakan Association of Singapore, or anything to tell me that you know, you've attended the, the Zoom meet and I'll give you a 10% of the book. The book is published upon order, okay? And it's sent uh, directly to your house from the publisher, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, again, again, the website is babanyonyaparanakans.org. So as you can see, it's slowly cooking, probably another minute. You don't want to overcook shrimp. I'll give it another minute. I can see it's still underdone. Okay. 
I tell you, if you make this dish, your guests, your family, your friends will truly, truly enjoy this. You know, what is amazing is that when you think of it, it's got coconut milk, chili, dry fish, shrimp, pineapple. What a unique combination. You will never find a combination like this before and it makes you wonder like who came up with this recipe, right? The closest thing that I've seen to this is um, a duck curry, a Thai duck curry that uses pineapple and pineapple and a duck, duck meat, but not quite the same as ours because it's not quite as sour as ours, okay? So I'm gonna give it one last taste before I serve it up. Just one quick last taste. Mm, so that, maybe a little more sugar, you know, I'm just gonna add a little bit more sugar. I think we'll just bring it up a little bit. Just a little bit more sugar. Doesn't have to be much. But you can taste the roots, the sarai, the lemongrass. All of these things are adding a lot of flavor. And it's also, it's, it's creating that viscosity, that thickness in the kwa that you need in Yonya cooking. Okay. So the advantage of having the shells on, again, is that you will never overcook the uh, shrimp easily. Okay. And also it gives a chance for the eater to taste the kwa on the shells before peeling it. Okay, I think it's done. Time for me to serve it up. So I'm going to serve it up here so you can see. So what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of the elements that I don't need anymore, like the um, asam cupping. Okay, you don't have to serve the uh, lemongrass anymore, the piece of lemongrass that added more flavor, unless you wanna do a bit of fancy decoration and that will work also. Sometimes I like to get a little bit fancy. Ooh, panas, hot. Okay. There you are. You see that? See how sedap that is? Sure. You can see the pineapple. You can see the prawns. You don't want too many pineapples. You know, you want just enough. Just enough. Nearly there, nearly all of it is going to be served. I like to serve it a little bit of a mound rather than flat. It gives some height and you know, it looks nice in the presentation. Like that. And then if you want to get fancy, go ahead, put a piece of um, sarai in one corner like that, okay? And then you can put a bit of like, you know, uh, for contrast of color, you can put a bit of asam cupping on one side that, or maybe put it on top here and that gives it a bit of color, okay? So I'm hoping that I've inspired you to cook these wonderful dishes and I hope you enjoyed Okay, um, my session today, actually this is the inaugural session of cooking for TPAS. So I feel very honored to have done the first session with you guys. And one more time to show you, we have this, okay, which is the udang, the mak nanas, okay, masak nanas. And we have the wonderful salad, the sambal nanas timun which I think you will truly, truly enjoy, okay? And the secretary has um, put the recipe links that you can print easily. They are Google Docs, 
okay? And you can print from there and it's uh, pretty easy to read. So I hope you get to try them. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you continue to cook Nyonya food. It's not as intimidating as it looks. Fortunately, we have modern appliances and know-hows that will help us to you know, cook these things faster, right? Instead of the old traditional way. So it's important to keep up the cultures, to keep up the cuisines, to keep up the traditions in our home and to keep up the food. So you may have a version that you put into these dishes that makes it unique. Write it down, share it with people, okay? So hopefully you will enjoy this. And I wish you in my dapo right now, my kitchen, and can smell and taste this. It's just wonderful. I can't wait to eat this tomorrow. It's close to midnight, so I'm not definitely eating this for dinner. Nice. It's definitely going to be my dinner tomorrow. True, true. Right, come see Alex. Uh, I'm sure we all are really hungry and rushing off to the supermarkets to purchase all the ingredients uh, to get down to doing your recipes. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next session that uh, Tipas can work with you and have you host now that you have uh, stirred up our interest on Ota Ota, let's get that going soon. And Ota yeah, and another dish, yeah. Uh, and yes. uh, I'll take this offline with you um, later. But uh, sure. in the meantime, I... uh, any more questions uh, for those of you who like to have a conversation with Alex quickly now? Uh, you may unmute your mic and uh, have a conversation with him. Thank you very much, Alex uh, from Melbourne. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. We have again people from Melbourne, from Seattle. Yeah, I have. I think one Canadian, if I'm not wrong. I have from Chicago, uh, Malaysia, of Thank course. Thank you, Gino. Yes. Yes, that's right. Singapore. So quite a varied uh, audience that we have. And thank you so much, Baba, Nonias, and friends far and wide for joining us this afternoon. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have a, a feedback QR code uh, that you have, would appreciate that you can fill it up so that we can continue with such wonderful sessions. Yeah, uh, it'll be flashed on quite soon. So please take the moment uh, for us to hear your feedback. Yeah. Other than that, the channel is still open for Alex to take your questions. Anybody? Anybody else? Thank you. So great to see so many people from different places. And yeah, thank you cool. for your 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 you know well wishes and also for your compliments about um, today's session. As I said, I feel very very um, honored that you know I did the inaugural session for TPAS. And hopefully this will continue. And I'll be happy to cook the ota ota. As I said, it's going to be easier than you think it is. Like another dish, like the asam laksa. A lot of people think asam laksa, oh, tedious, takes so much time. Mm -hmm. I can make asam laksa in less than one hour. You can feed your family in less than one hour with asam laksa. So believe me, there are ways to do it with wonderful flavors, but faster ways. Good. Thank you. So we are looking forward. Ah, okay, look, you <laughs> ask some laksa next, please. <laughs> Definitely, Hera. That will be on the list, Hera. We'll put it on the list. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good, good, good. Right. Okay, I will won't keep you because it's bedtime for you, Alex. Thank you so much. Come see once again. Yeah, and it brought back sama, a lot sama. of memories. Yeah, so it's good also that it brought back a lot of memories for some of us, yeah, who have uh, experienced. Uh, Mama's kitchen, Jojo's kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Definitely yeah. reminds me so much of my mama. You yeah. know, but it was my papa that actually was make make this the most. She was Cantonese, but she married into the Peranakan family, ah. and she was known to making this um this um uh, udang lemak nanas for us. I see. I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. it brings a tear to my eye actually because I miss my Jojo now. <laughs> And, uh, we all do. Like, yes, that's right. We all do. You yeah. know, especially their wonderful cooking and they express the love through the food. Yes, true. I agree with you. Agree with you. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much once again.
Yeah, and uh, we won't keep you, but I'll leave the page open for any more comments, any more questions that I can direct to Alex after this. But uh, I'll, Alex, you can take your leave, no problem, because it's uh, close to us or midnight to, for you already, and you have to keep up, uh, clean up your kitchen as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Thank, thank so, you, Gwen. Thank you for thank hosting you. everything. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. For You're being welcome. With us. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye bye now. Bye bye. For those who are here, uh, I think my colleague is trying to get the uh, feedback uh, QR code. Yes. So appreciate your feedback so that we can organize more of this kind of sessions for all. I hope you enjoyed this after this well this morning session. Uh, time wise, uh, I for such sessions it will be in the morning because. Uh, Alex is uh, over at Washington, D.C., so I have to adjust uh, the time to fit him. Thanks for organizing this, Gwen. No problem. I'm glad we all enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon. Stay well. Stay safe. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.